Hi, need a ride? Hop on in. I'm headed to Julia's Trucking Cafe. Come on, let's go. We made it just in time. Come on, let's go get a seat. Hello and welcome to another episode of Julia's Trucking Cafe. Tonight, this episode is going to be about driving, truck driver's etiquette, and I'm going to split it up into three parts, truck driving etiquette, four-wheelers etiquette, and professional appearance. Let's start with the truck driving etiquette. Merging onto traffic from, on the interstate, on the on-ramp. Plenty of times, trucks will be entering the interstate on the on-ramp and never look out their left mirror or window. They just take for granted what's in the mirror. They have earbuds in their ears, which I'm going to look up under FMCSA and see if that's even legal to have Earbuds in both ears. I don't think so, but don't quote me on that. Look over your left shoulder, people. Cars included. We'll get to that. Use your turn signals. Nobody can read your mind of what you're going to do, the maneuver you're going to make. That is the reason why that little left arm on the left side of your steering wheel, underneath the steering wheel... It's called a turn signal. It goes up for right and down for left, and in the middle it's shut off. Now, if you're running low on blinker fluid, let me know, and I always have a spare jug. Following too close or tailgating semis and tailgating cars. Guys and women, this is not a good idea. What's going to happen if... The person in front of them slams on the brakes. What are you going to do? Do you have a way out? No, because you can read their seal number on the back of their truck, or you can read their seal uh, serial number on the back of their car's license plate in front of you. If you think that someone's going to move out of your way because you're tailgating them, wrong answer. Those days are long gone, guys. Old bull haulers and everything, get out of my way. I own this interstate. There's too many people out here anymore for that kind of mentality. There really is. You are not the only one on the interstate. And I am talking to every culture Every guy, every lady out here that either drives a car or drives a truck from Chicago to New York, and yes, it gets me irritated. Be courteous to other drivers. When someone needs to come out, don't run up beside them and block them in because you want to play being an idiot. Let them out. Back off. Let them out. Be nice because you know what? Maybe one day you'll be in that same situation and somebody will come up behind you and let you out and won't block your way. Quit having tunnel vision. Start thinking for yourself. What happens if you're broke down on the side of the road? Move over. Somebody's broke down on the side of the road. Move your butt over to the left lane. Don't sit there and see how close you could get to them. See if you can blow the hat off or take off their door. Too many times I've been broke down on the side of the road and I get guys blowing the horn at me or, you know, never asking me if I'm okay or do I need any help. Maybe I don't have cell phone service. 
you know, may because everybody has a cell phone now, so it's just automatic that oh, I got help coming because I have a cell phone. Maybe I don't have any service in that area. Sure would be nice to to find out because I do run a CB. Sure would be nice to find out if I may need some help. Uh, you get a whole lot more out here, people, with honey than you do with vinegar. When someone gives you the headlights after you pass them and you're moving from the left lane back to the right lane or from the middle lane over to the slow lane, turn your signal on. After you make your maneuver and gradually move over, you're, this truck isn't a rocket ship. You don't need to point it and slam your trailer over. Ease it over little at a time, gradually. And then flash them your four ways. There again. That's a thank you. When someone turns their headlights, has their headlights on and shuts them off and then turns them back on again, that's called, hey, you missed me. So you ease back over. You pay attention out your right mirror. You ease back over. You flash them your clearance lights or you flash them your four ways. Just a couple of times, just like blink, blink. That's it. It is not against the law. You may not learn that in driving school, and that's what I'm here to teach you. It's not against the law to say thank you, to be courteous out here, to hold a door open for somebody for Pete's sake. Slower trucks being in the middle lane. You're doing 62 mile an hour. Why are you in the middle lane? I don't care about the sw- uh, the Smith system. Get over in the right lane where you belong. Emerging traffic, back off. Let them come on out. And if there's nobody in the middle lane, then move over. But if you see a truck coming up your butt and keep looking in your mirrors, your head should be rotating back and forth every 8 to 10 seconds from the left window, left mirror, Across your gauges, see what your truck is doing, to the right window, right mirror, and back again. You don't just sit there and look straight ahead and have tunnel vision like you're driving your car. If nobody's in the middle lane, then get over. But if somebody's coming up your butt, don't just sit there. Because nine times out of ten, we can't pass on the left. And don't get on the radio going, well, if you're going a lot faster than me, you can always hit the left lane and get around me. Be a little bit courteous. If you're going slow, move your tail over. So there's always going to be somebody faster than you. You don't own the middle lane. Move it over. And be courteous. Have some patience. Patience. Drivers going faster. Have a little bit of patience. There again, the tailgating. You're not having patience for the other driver to make a maneuver or to get around somebody or something. I see plenty of guys zigzagging back and forth. Hurry up. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. You're in my way. Get out of my way. That mentality, it will get you killed. It will get you killed. And how many wrecks have we seen out here on this interstate? Now I'm and also taking your 30 minute break in a fuel island. People are trying to fuel people. Other drivers got to go. Get your ass out of the doggone fuel island. Go park it. I've seen a Clem, KLM driver, doing a crossword puzzle in the fuel island, in the island next to me on my right, and eating. And I kind of yell out the window, well, that's really good, Clem. Taking your 30 minute break in Fuel Island. I had a radio show about you. So then what does he do? He pulls up, waits a few minutes. After that, what does he do? He goes and parks to continue doing his crossword puzzle. Because I don't think he was done with his 30 minute break yet. Brilliant. Real brilliant. So the next section I'm going to talk about is cars driving etiquette. You're driving your four-wheeler, and this is for all the people that don't drive semi-trucks. This is for your basic motoring public. You're coming on the interstate. Look over your left shoulder. Don't take for granted 
what you don't see in the mirror. You do have blind spots just like us semi-trucks have. Look over your left shoulder. See if there's a semi like right next to you or right, just right be at catty corner behind you that you didn't see in your mirror. Slow down because guess what? You have to yield to people that are already on the interstate. It isn't a race like an old bull hauler, we won't mention his name, said that back in the day, it was a race to the end of the doggone on-ramp, and whoever got there first, that who, that's the one that got the right-of-way. Wrong answer. The people that are merging on the on-ramp have to yield to the people that are already on the interstate. It is That's why a yield sign is at the end of the on-ramp. Yield means stop and proceed with caution. It doesn't mean try to outrun somebody on the interstate. Be aware when a truck is changing lanes. Look at the truck that you're passing. Does he have a signal on? Either get in front of him, get behind him. The safest place, people is behind a semi-truck, not in front of them. Because at any given time, we are carrying over 80,000 pounds. That's 40 tons. That's as much as 21 elephants. And I will hammer this home if I have to on every single episode of this show. Don't slam on your brakes in front of a semi Would you do it to a freight train going down the tracks? I don't think so. We are a freight train rolling down the interstate on wheels. We are a rolling bomb. And I cannot emphasize that enough. If you're stopped in an intersection, people, and a semi is trying to make a right turn, Don't sit there and just totally ignore them. If there's nobody behind you, back up. It's okay. He'll make his turn safely. He has to probably go down the street and get loaded at at some business. You'll be able to go through your green light then, because then it has changed by that time, and you'll be able to go about your day. There's no sense of flipping them off. Or getting all mad because, oh my goodness, you got to back up about five or ten feet. Oh man, you just can't handle that. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about next section is going to be professional appearance. Men, I'll start with you. Wear clean long pants with closed toe shoes when you're going into a customer. And along with socks and a clean shirt. We forget that we're representing the company that we're driving for. There's a professional appearance. Back in the day, we had to wear uniforms. Shirt, pants, yellow, UPS, consolidated freight ways. They all work. Walmart. They all wear uniforms. Professional appearance. Be clean when you're going into a customer. We're the first impression probably to that customer. Don't be wearing basketball shorts. Shower shoes, a wife beater shirt, or pajama pants into a shipper or receiver. To me, I am old school. That is so tacky. I can understand being comfortable when you drive. I love to be comfortable. Uh, when I get home or, you know, before I lay down, I have stuff I'm just going to do in my truck, whatever. Yeah, I'll throw on a pair of pajama pants, but you wouldn't get me caught dead in going into a truck stop or a restaurant or a customer in pajama pants. 
People have some self-respect. Other people see you. And if you don't have self-respect, how is anybody else going to have it for you? Change out of your pajama pants before you go on a customer. Just throw on some, uh, a clean pair of jeans, a clean t-shirt, and put on deodorant. If your hair is a mess, put a baseball cap on. I do. Doesn't hurt anything. If you're having to wait to get loaded or unloaded, don't be getting pissed off. Layer again, you get more with honey than you do with vinegar. It, there could the line could be down. They didn't have the product ready. The pro, they're waiting on the product to come in on a different truck. There could be a ton of reasons why you're not getting loaded as fast as you think you should. Don't be getting pissed off. Go to your truck, take a nap, read a book, watch TV. Everybody, almost everybody has TVs now. Oh, fire up the dish or direct TV and watch some TV. You know, do a puzzle. Don't be getting all pissed off at the customer. There again, professional appearance, professional attitude goes a long way. And wouldn't it be nice to get an email sent to your boss that, you know, your driver so-and-so, they were really patient. We apologize for them having to wait so long, but they were really patient and they understood. Wouldn't that be a nice kudos in your personnel file when it comes to your review and being out here and representing their customer? So I hope you learned a lot in this episode. And until next time, keep the shiny side up. <laughs>